Okay, so uh, if you want to ask more questions, uh, feel free to ask me later. I'm not going to try to rush through this, but I will sort of try to finish. So uh, one of the things that I've kind of landed on recently is the GAI Assistant for LabVIEW, which is a project code name of what we've been working on. And the idea of this is to provide in the LabVIEW IDE uh, the ability to interact with um, LLMs, <coughs> large language models, for the purpose of uh, coding assistance of a variety uh, of different shapes and sizes. And so I'll talk a little bit about you know, how this can work, uh, and then show you guys some demos, and then point you guys to some other demos, and then talk about next steps. So a large language model, essentially allows you to input some text called prompts, and then through the magic of GPUs and AIs, it outputs the statistically likely text-based response based on all of the human knowledge that was used to train it. And what uh, a lot of folks have been doing is figuring out how can you ask it the right questions provide it the right context data, um, and then kind of iterate on a conversation where each, each time you want to iterate on the conversation, you essentially like rerun uh, the LLM against the message history to provide an output that can then be converted back into structured data that you can do useful things. There's a you know whole majors, master's degree programs uh, now being offered on prompting, et cetera. But it's a really interesting set of technologies. Uh, a lot of the major AI vendors, um, OpenAI, uh, Minstrel, and um, there's another big one, offer uh, even beyond chat completions, things like what are called assistant APIs that actually remember the message history server side, and then also in the message APIs provide the ability up front to offer the LLM a set of tools, which are essentially a, a contract, like a function protocol, where you can tell the LLM while you're answering my question, you can actually ask me for more information. And you can do that by invoking functions that I have. I'll run them locally and give you the response. And so this allows the question and answer process to have this iterative function calling that's happening locally. So what I ended up doing, uh, I put a demo on LinkedIn. I'm not gonna show it here, but you can go to my profile. It's relatively recent. There's a video where I have Python essentially connected into LabVIEW. And um, under the hood of some of the stuff I'll show you, we have essentially an entire uh, Python API to LabVIEW's VI server and scripting. So anything you can do in LabVIEW scripting uh, in G, you can do in Python. And we've hooked this up to all the uh, LLM API tools and created an assistant, and you can actually issue voice commands, asking it things like, uh, you know, do you see the while loop on my block diagram? Uh, show the uh, sub-diagram label. Uh, hide the iteration terminal. And by providing it tools that give it visibility into the list of objects, their attributes, the list of property names, the ability to query property values, and the ability to set property values and invoke functions, you can actually have this API, or sorry, the LLM, uh, using LabVIEW. Now that's a little bit tricky, dangerous. Um, I'll show you guys some other examples of basically like a block diagram cleanup where we're taking structured data, uh, which is some repositioning, and then in LabVIEW, we're taking that data and actually doing the repositioning ourselves rather than just exposing the, the root level APIs. So what we can do on the Python side is from LabVIEW code, because we have the scripting API, we can traverse all the G objects, wires, nodes, structures, et cetera. We can generate a JSON representation of a block diagram. And these LLMs are being trained on Python, JSON, XML, JavaScript for the purpose of uh, code assistance. 
Uh, so having a JSON representation is really helpful. Uh, also, what we can do is, if you have like a selection of code, we can acquire a ping image and transfer that to the LLM as additional context information that it can use uh, to solve problems. And also, we can transpile, translate LabVIEW code into Python or pseudocode representations uh, that actually these LLMs can actually run the Python code behind the scenes. So there's interesting possibilities there. So what I wanted to show you here is I'm hitting Control G for Gaia, and it's just running this little helper that lets me see essentially that it's running. I'm gonna run the main VI here. It's just giving me some warnings, which are fine. Okay, and then in two minutes or less, I'm one going minute. one minute or less. I'm going to drop a couple functions here. Let's see what happens. This file, read file. Uh, I promise we'll get to the demo and it'll all work just fine. Okay, and so when I have a selection, we have this little uh, sparkle that shows up. AI, the official icon of AI is sparkle. And I'll do a cleanup. And while that happens, maybe I can move this down and you can see that it's LLMing and it did some cleanup. Um, I could even, maybe even like wrap it in a while loop. 10 seconds, Jim, hurry up. And then I'm gonna switch over and I'll show you that one of the things it's doing here, you can see it's generating a text prompt. There's a lot of JSON mixed in there. Um, AI. 